Special thanks to Patreon supporter Ghost of Shishima for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared to before here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the M1131 fire support vehicle. The fire support vehicle of the Striker series provides automated enhanced surveillance target acquisition, target identification, target tracking, target destination, position location, and communications functionality. Targets will be transmitted instantly to the fire support system and shooter. The fire support vehicle provides enhanced surveillance, target acquisition, target identification, target de destination, and communications supporting the SBCT with first round fire for effect capability. It integrates the current M707 striker mission equipment package. The FSV uh, provides the fire support teams with the cap capability to automate command and control functions to perform firing, support planning, directing, controlling, and cross-function area coordination and execution. So yeah, a uh, pretty interesting looking vehicle here and one vehicle that uh, probably not a lot of you guys are too familiar with, but it is part of the striker family. Um, this basically is just designed to be a kind of forward, um, I guess, uh, I guess target acquisition type vehicle or reconnaissance type vehicle um, is designed to basically help pinpoint uh, locations and provide kind of, um, you know, an actual like, I guess, uh, view on how artillery is performing or how, um, you know, targets are acquired and all that stuff. So kind of interesting. I imagine it probably also has the equipment to kind of laser guide um, bombs in and various types of things. So if you think about it, pretty important vehicle. And um, definitely one that is going to be important for basically any kind of combat situation. Um, so yeah, pretty interesting vehicle and should be a fun vehicle to add to our ever-growing family of uh, striker vehicles. Um, before we go ahead and do get started and taking a look at this vehicle, I want to go and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter uh, Ghost of Tashima for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more than you guys already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a vehicle request you're choosing. Help support the work I do on my channel and is... Um, uh, always much appreciated and stuff like that. You're in the cool benefit of getting a vehicle per month uh, of your request, uh, depending on which tier you're sub to, um, and every month that you are a patron. So definitely feel free to check that out. Um, it helps really support the work I do and is, um, you know, really cool. So um, anyways, let's go ahead and kind of dive in and take a look at here at this um, vehicle. So as I mentioned, this is a striker. So it uses the striker base here for um, the vehicle. Uh, kind of got the standard features and stuff like that of the striker, nothing real crazy or anything like that going on with it. Um, as you work away up here, we have the driver's uh, viewport location, um, some of the engines and um, kind of exhaust and all that stuff located up in this uh, area of the vehicle. Uh, as you work away up, we have a crane, which I found kind of interesting. I'm not exactly sure what this is used for, uh, maybe for helping load uh, vehicles or something of that sort. Really no idea, your guess is as good as mine, but it does have it, and we do have it um, here on the vehicle. Uh, we then have a cupola here, right here for a gunner, and also the um, this uh, type of optics box, which I imagine is probably for laser guiding or range finding or just something of that general sort. But you also have a 50 caliber machine gun mounted up here on top with the um, with the on, on the cupola. And we just obviously have radio antennas and stuff like that, as this vehicle is going to be doing a lot of communication the back here and. That's pretty much a vehicle. Pretty straightforward vehicle, um, but again, a very important one, and one that would be a um, vehicle that would definitely be in modern day combat, as it's very uh, necessary to actually be able to, you know, accurately hit targets and, uh, you know, be able to request fire support accurately. So, pretty cool vehicle, um, but with that, let's go and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright, guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer here, we're going to be starting with layer one. For layer one, to go ahead and get started with, we're going to basically just be setting up our pretty much our wheelbase and our axles. Uh, to get started here, we're going to place down a polished black stone upside down stair with a second stair behind it like so. We're going to go do the same thing right behind the stair, so two stairs back to back like so. We then want to go ahead and place down a stone brick uh, top slab coming off these two stairs like so, an iron trap door coming off those stone brick top slabs, and then a narrow stone brick top slab. We're going to then place down another set of uh, two polished black stone stairs back to back. Like that on both sides there and you have your front axles complete. Note this is the front so that the axles here are on the stair that's further back and not the stair that's further front. Um, doesn't really matter too much but just want to again go ahead and mention that. 
After we have that done, we're going to then take our yellow concrete. We're going to go ahead and uh, skip back a space of two on both sides here. Or just use whatever block to kind of guide us back. And we're going to then place down two polished black stone upside down stairs on the back here as well. Like this. And then another set of two going back on both sides here for our rear axles. And once we have that done, we just want to go ahead and place down a stone brick top slab between these stairs here. Iron trap door, stone brick top slab again between these stairs here, and then iron trap door to connect them together. We can go and then delete any blocks that we placed. And you can see here that we have a nice wheelbase here set up for the vehicle. Pretty simple stuff, nothing too complicated or anything like that. But once you have that all done, that is going to wrap up for layer number one. And with that, we'll go ahead and start moving into layer number two. I right, guess moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to be going ahead and placing down a stone brick wall on top of each one of these stone brick top slabs. So just like this for each one of our axles here. And we also want to go ahead and go to our stairs here. We're just going to place down two polished black stone stairs back to back on top of each one of these stairs going all the way along the side here. And same thing over here as well. So just like this. After you have that done, we want to go and then take our green terracotta. We're going to place down a row of three across the center here. Green terracotta block between our mossy cobblestone walls. And we're just going to go and kind of continue this going all the way back here, filling in the space. Like so. Until we get back to that point right there and we have that space all filled in. Now, once we get to this point, we're going to place down another row of three of green terracotta across. A zombie head to both sides here. And then a row of two, or sorry, row of three of dark liquid top slabs across. We're going to go and place down a iron frame on both sides here, a trip bar hook in the iron frame rotated so it's facing downwards like so, and that'll be the front there. And then for the sides, we're going to place down a dark oak with top slab on the side of this green terracotta block to both sides. And then for the back here, we want to go in very simply, place down a dark oak with upside down stair, coming off the side of the stair like so, and then a corner stair coming off that stair. So same thing over here, just like that. In the space in between these green terracotta blocks, or these dark liquid stairs here, we're going to place down a row of three of green terracotta blocks across. We then want to go and place down an end rod in the middle space like so, and then coming off both sides of this end rod, we're going to place down a zombie head like so. Also coming off the corner stairs here, we're going to place down an item frame to both sides, a trip bar hook in the item frame, and we want to rotate so it's facing downwards like so. And after we have that all done there, that is going to basically wrap it up for our structure here. We're going to go ahead and move into a kind of... Um, you know, optional uh, addition, which is going to be using these banners to make these uh, banner wheels, which I kind of think sprucens up the vehicle and gives it a little bit more detail, at least in my opinion. But we're going to be going ahead and moving into that, and I'll show you guys how to make those uh, banners, and uh, we'll continue on from there. All right, guys, to make these banners, very simply, we're going to need a new loom, two black banners, two green dye, and four black dye. We're going to go ahead and go into our loom, and we want to go ahead and take our black banners. We're going to place them into our loom and our green dye. We're going to go and select the line over here on the left side, like so. And we want to go and then select the line over here on the right side. And we get these two banners that look like this. Now from this point here, we want to go and then take our banners. And we're going to put each one back into our loom. And we're going to go and then take our black die, select the line across the top. And we're going to go and then do the line across the bottom. And you basically get this uh, design that looks like that. And we're going to do the same thing here for this banner as well. So line across the top, bottom. And we basically get two looking C's basically is what we created. We're going to go and take these um, banners and we're going to place them down on these dark group or these polished black stone stairs like this all the way across here with the green facing toward each other. It's going to carry this nice wheel design here for the um, vehicle. And once we have that all done, that's going to basically do it up for, or finish it off for those banners. And with that, that will conclude layer two. With that, let's move into layer number three. I right, guess so we'll go ahead and move into our next layer. We move into layer number three. For layer three to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go and take a green terracotta. We're placing down a row three across the front here, followed by a second row three. We then want to place down a item frame over here to the what will be the left side of the vehicle, a white bin in the item frame rotated on its side, and a dark oak with sign over the item frame if you can. Note that if you are on uh, bedrock, you cannot put a sign over the item frame, so uh, you'll just have to just go with the item frame only and not the sign. After that's done, uh, we're going to have our two dark oak with signs across this side here on these two green terracotta blocks, and then a green stained glass pane to both sides here, followed by a mossy cobblestone wall back from those glass panes. We're going to place down another row of three of green terracotta across and another mossy cobblestone wall to both ends. We're going to go and then place down a row of uh, three of green terracotta across, a dark oak with upside down stair to both sides here. And we then want to go ahead and place down a stone brick wall on top of each one of these stone brick walls, like this, all the way going back. So, like that. 
And the space in between the walls, we're going to place down green terracotta. And then we want to fill in the rows here between those um, walls there with green terracotta. And we're going to fill this all the way in and place down a row across this right here on the back. Now once we get to this point here on the sides, we're going to go ahead and take our dark oak top size. We're going to place down one, two, and three top size back. Upside down stair, green terracotta block, upside down stair, and then one, two, and three dark oak top size back, and another green terracotta block. We're going to go then place down an item frame here. A trip bar hook and the item frame rotated facing downwards. We're going to go ahead and go over here to the right side and do the same exact thing. So just like this. Going back and top slabs, green terracotta block, item frame, and our trip bar hook like that. So same thing we did over there on the left side. Now on the back here, we're going to then place down a dark oak stair on top of those two stairs there. A dark oak sign here to the sides. Like so. We're going to then place down an item frame coming off those stairs in those stairs or in the item frame we're going to place down a apple for the brake lights and we want to go and then also place down a dark oak fence gate coming off that stair opened up toward the um, stair itself um, coming off the side here to the left we're going to place down a skeleton skull coming off this fence gate and we also want to go ahead and grab ourselves some granite walls we're going to place down a granite wall to both sides next to those stairs and then a green stained glass pane there in the center for the start of our door and with that all complete, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number uh, three for the build. And again, here's an overview of what it should look like so far. And with that, we're going to go and move into our next layer, layer number four. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer. We'll be going ahead and moving into layer number four. For layer four, to go ahead and get started with here, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down an anvil on top of this green terracotta block. Coming off that anvil toward the front, we're going to place down a zombie head. To both sides of the anvil, we're also going to place down a dark oak wood slab. And we also want to go ahead and grab ourselves a dark oak wood fence gate. We're going to place it down, come off the sides here of those um, slabs there. And then come off the sides of those fence gates there. We're going to place down a item frame with a snowball in the item frames like so for the front headlights. We then want to go ahead and also place down a dark oak wood button on top of these two green terracotta blocks. With that all complete, we're going to go and take our dark oak wood stairs. We're going to place down a row of three across the back here, followed by a corner stair to both sides. After that, we want to go and then place down a mossy cobblestone wall over here on the, uh, sorry, actually on both sides, and then a row of three green terracotta blocks across the center here. We're going to go and then place down an item frame on the side of that wall, and in that item frame, we want to go and place down a trip bar hook, which is going to be facing upwards, like so. We're going to go and then take our green terracotta. We're going to do a row of five across, followed by a second row of five. We then want to do two rows of three. After those two rows of three there, we're going to take our green shulker boxes and we're going to place down two green shulker boxes on their sides to both sides here and dark oak wood buttons coming off the sides of the shulker boxes like so. We're going to go then take our green terracotta, do a row of five across, followed by a second row, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth row going across. We're going to then go to the sides here of these two blocks, place down item frames here on the sides there, and we're going to go then place down a iron axe on the side here and a shovel a iron axe and a shovel here and this is just to show some spare tools mounted on the side of the vehicle kind of an optional little detail you can put on or not it doesn't really matter too much um anyways continuing on on the back here we're going to place down a mossy cobblestone wall on top of these two stairs here and on the sides of the wall we're going to place down a dark oak sign so like that we then want to go ahead and grab a green shulker box and on top of this fence gate here we're going to place down a green shulker box to both sides and make sure not to rotate our apple here. We then want to go and take our dark oak signs and we're just going to go ahead and wrap them around the uh, three sides here of the shulker box. So just like this and that's going to do it for those shulker boxes. We then want to go ahead and grab our granite walls and our green stained glass. We're going to place down a granite wall here to both sides and our green stained glass there in the exact center. And once we have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number four for the build. And here's what it looks like from up above. Anyways, that's it for layer four. Let's go ahead and move into layer number five. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer. We'll be moving into layer number five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood slab that's going to be on top of this green terracotta block here. We're going to place down an item frame, a black bed in the item frame, and we want to rotate on side like so. And if we can, we're also going to place down a dark oak wood sign over it like so. To the sides here of this uh, slab, we're going to place down a um, zombie head here to both sides at a slight angle like so. 
And we want to go and then place down a dark liquid slab here. A zombie head to the side. And a zombie head over here on this side as well. Now once we get to this portion here, we're going to then take our anvils. We're going to place down a row of two of anvils across like so. And we then want to go ahead and go to the sides of the anvils here. We're going to place down a dark liquid stair. We then want to grab ourselves a lectern. And we're going to place down a lectern facing that direction like so. And coming off the lectern, we're going to place down a polished blackstone block and a stair going forward from the block, a polished blackstone, and then a dark liquid stair here with a dark liquid sign coming off the face of the stair. We also want to place down a mossy cobbles to wall on top of this block right here. Coming off the sides of the full block and stair here, we're going to place down two polished blackstone walls to the side there for the exhaust. Now once we get to this point here, uh, we do have something that's kind of um, a little bit using magic, you can say the very least. Uh, if you do have access to a debug stick, you can go ahead and use this um, feature, which is really awesome to go ahead and create some cool designs. Um, I do believe Bedrock players do have the debug stick, you just gotta look around and maybe find the commands for it. Uh, but very simply, uh, we can go ahead and use this to make a floating lever. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna place down two blocks here on top of those slabs, and we're gonna place down a lever coming off the side of those blocks. We're going to take our debug stick and we're going to select it so that the uh, the selection is selected face wall. We're going to, go to make sure that we select it to the floor. And we're going to, go to do this for both sides here. We then want to go ahead and use our debug stick to change direction. So we're going to have it facing to the sides here. Like so. And after we have that done, we can go and delete those blocks, and then go ahead and go into the side of the lever here, we can just place down an item frame, or sorry, not an item frame, but a zombie head to both sides there to go ahead and create the side mirrors there for the vehicle. Again, kind of a magical little trick there, but um, looks really good and really complements the front of the vehicle. Um, anyways, once we have that done there, uh, we want to go and then take our dark liquid stairs, and we're going to place down a row of three stairs across here, followed by a dark liquid corner stair to both sides. We then want to take our green terracotta, and we're going to place down a row of three of green terracotta across, followed by a second row of three, a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and even a eighth row of green terracotta going back. Along the sides of these rows here, we're just going to take mossy cobbles to walls and run them all the way along the length here of those rows of eight. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some green stained glass panes. We're going to place down a row of seven down the side here. Same thing over here, a row of seven like that. We're going to then grab ourselves a item frame. So go into our creative menu here, item frame, place an item frame here on this uh, wall here, and we're going to go ahead and go into the item frame and place an item hook and have it rotate downwards like so. Same thing over here as well, just like that. And we want to go and then place down a zombie head here on top of these two green shulker boxes like so, with a dark liquid button coming off those green terracotta blocks like that. And once we have that all done there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have for layer number 5 for the build. And looking at it from above here, this is what you should have uh, for it uh, with it done. Anyways, that right there is it for layer 5. With that, we're probably going to move into our final layers here, which is going to consist of doing all the top details and all that stuff. So with that, let's go ahead and move into our last final layers. Alright guys, moving into our final layers, we have layers 6 through 12. For these layers to go ahead and get started with, we do have quite a bit going on here. Basically all this top detail we're going to be putting on in this layer. So, uh, pay close attention, we will be uh, doing quite a bit here. So, to begin with, we'll be going ahead and going to this monster cobblestone wall here in the front right. We're going to place down a dark oak wood fence post on top of it. An end rod that goes up, a zombie head on top of the end rod, like so. And then an end rod that comes off of it facing forward. So, pretty simple for that. We then want to go ahead and work our way back. Now from this we want to go ahead and place down a mossy cobblestone wall which is going to be going on top of this um, dark oak wood stair, or actually sorry this, I believe it's the green terracotta block, let me just double check here, it's actually going to be on top of this wall right here. Now we're going to go then place down an end rod that comes off that wall going forward and a zombie head that comes off the end rod. We're going to place down a random block to the sides of this end rod doesn't matter which block, and then coming off of it, we're gonna place down a zombie head. We can then go ahead and we can go ahead and then delete those blocks, so we just have the zombie heads. Once we get to this point, we want to go ahead and then place down a dark liquid slab next to this wall, and then a dark liquid upside down stair coming off the side of that slab. We're gonna go ahead and place down a slab back from the stair, and a slab back from the uh, mossy cobblestone wall. In the center here, we're gonna place down a spruce wood slab. We then want to place down a green, t or sorry, dark liquid uh, slab there a zombie head here in the corners, and then to the sides here on the mossy cobblestone wall and the dark oak wood slab, we're going to place down two dark oak wood signs. 
We're also going to go ahead and go over here to this side, and on the side of this dark oak wood stair. In this slab, we're going to also do the same thing here, placing our two dark oak wood signs. Once we get to this point, uh, we want to go ahead and then grab our dark oak wood trapdoors, and we're going to be going ahead and place them down on top of these two anvils, like so. And we're going to go ahead and also grab ourselves our wither skeleton skulls and replace our wither skeleton skull here at a slight angle. One like this facing directly like this, and then another one at the same kind of angle that one is. So those are some smoke grenade dispensers there for the sides. And we're going to now work on our turret here. So for our turret, or really just our machine gun mount, um, it's pretty standard design, basically what I've used before for my um, 50 caliber machine guns, if you are familiar with some of my past tutorials. Uh, so it's pretty much the exact same thing here. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to be going ahead and placing down a polished blackstone upside down stair on top of this wall. And then going back from it, we're going to place down an anvil. And then come off the back of the anvil here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign. Actually, my bad, the anvil is actually going to go on top of this wall here. And then we're going to place down the polished blackstone stair. So my bad on that one. So it's like this. And then a dark oak wood fence gate come off the back of the anvil. Now once we have that done, we're going to then take our chains and we're going to place down two chains going forward from the stair like that. We want to go and then place down a mossy cobblestone wall to the left side of the stair. And a dark oak wood sign coming off that um, wall there. On this other side here, we're going to place down a trapdoor. That's going to be coming off this side here. So notice how it's not right up against the stair here. It kind of is a little bit forward of it. So just like that. We're going to go to the side here, place down an item frame. In that item frame, we want to go and place down a black bed with the pillow rotated facing toward the front and a dark oak sign on the side of the stair. After that, uh, we're going to then take a redstone repeater and just place it on top of the Paul's Blackstone stair with the notches spread apart like so, and that's going to do it there for the gun. For our little optics um, box here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood top slab on top of this upside down stair, and the both sides of the slab here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood trap door that kind of comes down from it. We then want to place down an item frame coming off the slab, and a, we're going to take the heart of the sea, which is this little object here, and we're going to place it down in the item frame like that. Once we have that complete, we just want to go and then place down a daylight detector on top of this top slab. And that right there is going to do it for the little optics box. Now with that done, uh, we're going to now move into our crane here. We're going to start off by placing our dark oak fence posts on this mossy cobblestone wall. We're going to place down one, two, three. And we're going to stop at three. We're going to go then place down a grindstone on top of that fence post facing this direction, and we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign on the left side here of the grindstone. We then want to go ahead and use barrier blocks. If you do not have access to barrier blocks, you can go ahead and use fence gates in this place instead. We're going to place down two barrier blocks and then two dark oak wood signs along the sides there of those barrier blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood fence gate on the end of the barrier block here and have it opened up toward the left side. And we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign on the side of that fence gate. We then want to place down a zombie head on top of this grindstone. And then going back from it, we're going to place down a end rod. Coming off the zombie head toward the other direction, we're going to place down two chains going forward. And right here, we're going to go ahead and do another trick here with our debug stick using a lever. So we're going to place down a lever here. Uh, we're going to go and select it so that it's going to be coming off the wall, down like this. And then we want to change the direction so that it's facing toward our chains like that. And we have our crane design there, and we can also place down a chain that comes down from the fence key here to kind of make it look a little bit more like a crane or a winch type system. Once we get to this point here, uh, we want to go ahead and grab our dark oak wood buttons. We're going to place down a row of three across this space here. To the sides here, we're going to go ahead and place down a wither skeleton skull at a slight angle like so. One kind of straight on, and then another one at a slight angle, so just like we did on the air side there for our smoke grenade dispensers. We're going to go ahead and place down a... Another row of three of dark oak buttons like that. In the center space here, we're actually going to swap out this block here for a green shulker box. And then to the sides, we want to go and place down a spruce wood trap door. Lastly, we're going to go and do our radio antennas. And to do these very simply, we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence post on top of this mossy cobblestone wall. And we're going to go and go up one, two, three, four, five, and six iron bars up. And same thing back here on this wall fence post and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing six iron bars up just like that over here same thing fence fence post and same thing with our iron bars going up like so once we have that all complete there that is going to basically wrap up what we have for this vehicle layers six through twelve and with that we'll complete your design here for the m1131 uh 
fire support vehicle. Hope you guys do enjoy this build and are able to put it to good use. If you do end up using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This can be a link from a side of the build to my channel or this video if this does appear on, on any social media sites. As long as you guys give me, give me proper credit for the build you're for using for projects you guys are working on. Um, again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Ghost of Tsushima for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. And that, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been your do before, and I'll see you guys next time.